Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Nikhil Rati. I'm CEO of London Stock Exchange, uh, PLC. Uh, it's an honor to be in uh, Sopot today. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bilecki, uh, for your introduction. I promise you I won't speak for 65 minutes. Um, and thank you to the whole European Financial Congress team for this invitation um, and to all the sponsors, Bank, Pekal, um, and others for putting on such a, a wonderful event in a wonderful location. I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, challenges and opportunities for, for European uh, capital markets. Uh, capital markets have a long history in Europe, especially in places with a strong history of trade. Um, I recently learned that Dansk merchants established the first Polish mercantile exchanges in 1379. Uh, they probably met at the Divor Artuza, or Arthur Court, as we would translate uh, into English. And today, that stunning building is a point of interest for visitors and a branch of the Dansk History Museum. However, back in history, it used to be the meeting place for local and foreign merchants, including those from England who are allowed to appear at the court from as early as 1492. And I think those same merchants must have gained inspiration from the trading they were doing there, and they brought that inspiration back to London uh, and created the first trading venues in London in 1698, but not in as fantastic a location as the Arthur Court, but in coffee houses around the city of London. And that's how the London Stock Exchange was created in a coffee house where the first official list of securities um, was traded by uh, brokers. Uh, we've moved on um, since then, um, and now one of the largest uh, exchanges globally, uh, trading more international securities than any other market um, in the world. Let me start today by giving some figures that can help us to set the scene and understand where we are in terms of European capital markets. Um, outstanding debt securities issued by non-financial corporations in the European Union are about a third of US levels, and total stock market capitalization um, is only half. Um, in comparison with the United States, Europe's capital markets remain underdeveloped, especially so in Central um, and Eastern Europe. Businesses in Europe remain largely focused for their growth um, on bank financing. A recent CFA Institute survey of investment professionals asked about the issues concerning capital markets in the CE region, and they highlighted in particular the scarce supply of listed equity and debt securities and low retail investor demand. Um, I would add a few more. Um, a lack of financial education in non-financial companies um, and a structure and functioning of the EU market characterized by a high degree of fragmentation, barriers to cross-border investments, and also the fact that equity is taxed many times while debt is subsidized by the taxpayer through deductibility of interest. And so the overall effect of um, the underdevelopment of European capital markets um, is a restriction in the availability of capital for growing companies reducing their capacity to create jobs, to innovate, and to support European economic growth. Now, the European Commission has set out very laudable ambitions to address these barriers through a capital markets union, bringing together regulation in EU financial services and, and supporting financial stability. There's been some important progress, um, but not as much as everyone would like, as noted in a recent letter by the Dutch, French, and German finance ministers. For capital markets union to, to really thrive, the private sector and public sectors need to collaborate. Uh, the Polish government's first capital market development strategy, supported by the EBRD and European Commission, is an excellent way forward, and stock exchanges can play a crucial role. As one of the leading stock exchange groups in Europe, we're well positioned to support healthy and vibrant capital markets. Um, to give you some figures, the UK quoted small and mid-cap companies have a ca market capitalization of 477 billion euro, around 2, billion, 2 trillion zloty, um, and employ um, over 3 million workers. It's crucial that there's a big focus on small and medium-sized enterprises and the ability for them to access permanent capital to undertake risk uh, activities. We uh, support uh, small mid-sized companies through various initiatives. We have a report uh, called A Thousand Companies to Inspire Europe, which seeks to map the fastest growing 
private SMEs in Europe. And there are 90 companies in that booklet from Poland. Let me give you some examples. Max Computers, a distribution company from Lower Silesia with a 40% annual sales growth since 2010 that has multiplied their revenues by six times. Solomus, a company from Plock that in just eight years has taken a solid position among the top European providers of business solutions in the areas of liquid fuels. Adamed, a pharma and biotech company from near Warsaw that with 180 patents manufactures 580 new generation products that are distributed in 65 countries. These are examples of just a few exceptional companies from Poland that have global potential uh, and with the access to permanent equity capital and other financing they need can realize uh, those ambitions. So through the elite program, we work with investors, with universities to help these high growth businesses or high growth businesses like them to become large corporations um, of tomorrow. And we have 1,100 companies on that program from 42 countries across the world. Equity capital is also um, important to enable international companies to access um, the Polish markets. The CEO of Bank Pekal earlier talked about how companies are global. They're looking to do business cross-border. I can just think of a few examples on our market where equity capital has enabled businesses to create jobs in Poland. DWF, a UK law firm from Manchester, listed on London um, in March this year and used part of the capital raised at the IPO to establish a new office uh, in Warsaw, establishing a team of 11 partners, 45 lawyers and 31 support staff. Global Worth, a real estate company listed on AIM, um, our growth market, completed a capital increase of 550 million euros um, and is now accessing a number of opportunities here in Poland, including the acquisition of the Warsaw Trade Tower, among others. Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling, um, a very large company on our market, employs 2,000 employees um, in uh, its Polish uh, operations across three major cities. So these companies are global. They're accessing investors across the world, um, equity investors, and are able, using that equity capital, to um, uh, invest in Poland and in the wider CE region. It's vital for the future success of European capital markets that these good, innovative companies are able to access local and global investors. And therefore, I think great care, particularly in the context of Brexit, needs to be taken to avoid policies which might constrain um, the flow of capital. Um, policies like um, the share trading obligation um, in the European Union, which would restrict EU investors from interacting with other global investors when trading European securities. All that will do will increase the cost of capital for European companies and um, the costs for European investors as well. There's also been a big trend in capital markets towards uh, greater index-based and passive investing. And I think it's very important to recognize that Poland is the first country in Central uh, and Eastern Europe to reach the milestone of developed market status following significant investments in infrastructure here. With approximately $16 trillion benchmarked to uh, international indices in our own FTSE Russell group alone, that reclassification of Poland places um, the country among the top 25 most advanced global economies and should enable the 36 Polish companies that now qualify for that status to access even wider pools of capital. We're also seeing a very significant trend in terms of um, emerging market stock um, and flow of capital. By some estimates, by 2050, 50% 50 of the stock and flow of global capital will be coming from uh, countries that were defined as emerging markets uh, 10 years ago, China leading the pack. We're building a connection with the Shanghai Stock Exchange to make those flows of capital uh, more seamless, but we're also seeing um, increasing activity out of India um, and other emerging markets as well. So as the Capital Markets Union is developed, an outward looking Capital Markets Union is absolutely vital to maximize the investor flow and the opportunities for European uh, companies. It's interesting to note that in the in London market last year, uh, when it came to the development of the renminbi, the Chinese currency um, as a trading currency, there was more transactions in the London foreign exchange markets in US dollar renminbi than there were in GBP euro. Still a long way to go um, in terms of relativity to the US dollar, but a signal um, of the increasing um, role of RMB in international trade. The final theme I'll talk about is green finance and environmentally um, sustainable investing. 
On some estimates, $30 trillion of assets globally, professionally managed assets, are dedicated to mandates focused on environmentally sustainable investing. There is a huge shift um, underway in the way in which the investor community thinks about these issues and the demands they're placing on companies to demonstrate how they are supporting a transition to a low carbon economy. Poland has led the way with green bonds, bonds where the proceeds are hypo hypothecated to explicitly green projects. Recently, we saw in London the Hong Kong government launch a very large sovereign green bond. But it's not just in the bond market that we are seeing um, these developments. Exchange traded funds tracking ESG criteria um, are growing exponentially in terms of take up. And also, renewable energy funds, equity funds investing in solar assets started in the UK, but we're now seeing those funds in the UK being used to finance US solar, German renewables just a few weeks ago, and also other markets around the world. And I think this will be one of the defining factors of global capital markets in 10 or 20 years. And it's, it's, it is interesting that when China chaired the G20, they placed green finance right at the top um, of the agenda. So this is an agenda where the emerging markets are going to play a central role um, in defining international standards. All of these topics, I think, growth of financing for SMEs, internationalization of the emerging markets, green finance, these are all global topics um, that are significant for us, whatever the outcome um, of Brexit. And I think addressing all of those will support the development of a vibrant European capital market, including here in Poland. Thank you very much.